naturally will want you to answer uh, you know, the way that you typically do. And um, But this question of imagery, uh, pictures, is a perennial issue that since I was young, people have been arguing about and that among other things, beard, and all types of things like that. But it seems, in, it, it really, um, for me, seems to be an extremely important issue uh, even though at, at one time in my life, I really didn't consider it to be very important because I guess I would say that I really didn't see the significance of it uh, because all of us had learned about how the Bible uh, forbade sort of this idea of graven images or uh, sort of trying to make a likeness of God among the commandments. Uh, and oftentimes people, um, when they don't have a, a justification or a rationalization of the issue, that they really um, don't see the seriousness of any, any given thing. Now we know that Islamically there's a di this differentiation between things like sculptures or idols uh, of living things uh, and things that are paint painted or engravings on the wall where you find like sort of 3D images are said to um, be prohibited for Muslims to actually um, to create uh, manuf manufacture with the condition that they are fully sort of fully um, uh, completely uh, constructed uh, uh, in addition to the uh, the head and the facial features among other things um, but um, I'm interested and we're interested in knowing like um, what sort of ideas you have about uh, why uh, imagery may or may not be prohibited in, in Islam especially with relationship to photography, what sort of impact uh, or influence may uh, imagery have on the human psyche, among other things? All right. Well, alhamdulillah, the, um, the, uh, this is a long-standing issue and one which there are many contradictory things said about, as you have mentioned. And there are various ways of looking at it. So one way of looking at it is just from the textualist, scripturalist way. And there one would observe that although you've cited the Bible as prohibiting images, mm -hmm. there isn't any actual Quranic prohibition of images in the Quran. Mm -hmm. There is the destruction of the idols by Ibrahim mm -hmm. in the Quran. And there is the destruction of the idols in the Kaaba by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Sunnah. So the idea that idols were not to be permitted is something that's uh, present. And the fact that the earliest Muslims, even in the time of the Prophet himself, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, destroyed the idols, the expeditions were sent out as uh, documented by Ibn al-Kalbi in the book uh, Kitab al-Aslam to destroy the idols in Arabia in different places. So the idols themselves were destroyed, as well as sacred rocks and trees mm -hmm. and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, all of that historically happened. And then there is also in the Sunnah and the Hadith, the mention of the uh, image makers will be asked to breathe life into their images at the Day of Judgment, and they won't be able to, so they'll go to hell and that the angels and uh, they will not enter a house in which there's a, a dog or, a, or an image and things like that. But on the whole, even though there are these hadiths, uh, which themselves don't quite explicitly prohibit making images for all that, mm -hmm. Uh, there's more of a uh, cultural historical heritage against images in Muslim history. And so one can inquire about that and about why that was and what the purpose of that was, and it's very interesting indeed. And it is especially traceable in the history of the coinage where the earliest Muslims uh, coins are mentioned in the Quran. The dinar is mentioned in the Quran, and the dirham is mentioned in the Quran. Both of those coins are mentioned. The dinar was, a, by that time, although it had started as a uh, Roman silver coin, had become a gold coin. So it was the term that was used for the gold coin, like for the Roman solidus, was called in Arabic dinar. Mm -hmm. And the uh, Persian silver coins, very thin coins, which were sometimes called warak, 
were uh, because they were so thin mm -hmm. uh, were also called the dirham. Mm -hmm. And so th these are the ancient meanings of it. And of course, dirham is a word derived from Greek, which goes back to drachma in Greek, which was the currency of modern Greece as well. That they revived from ancient Greece. Mm -hmm. And the dinar, denarius in Latin, so that's derived from a Latin word. So these words are there anyway. And in addition to the word khinpar, which is found as a hundred weight, uh, is mentioned, although not specifically as a coin. So coins are mentioned in the Quran, actually. And yet, what coins did the early Muslims use? And what coins may they have known at Mecca? Well, they had to be coins of the Roman Empire and the Persian Empire. And these coins, these empires were ideological rivals, and they had highly uh, ideological decorations on the coins. So the <laughs> Roman coins showed in one side the Roman emperor in the glorious robes, and on the other side, a big, huge cross, mm -hmm. and, on the, um, uh, and occasionally other variations. The uh, Persian coins showed on one side the Persian king with his unique crown, and each king is identified with having a different crown style. And on the reverse, a fire altar with two Zoroastrian priests attending it. Mm. So you have the religious and the royal imagery, respectively, on the opposite mm -hmm. sides of the coins of right. both. Mm -hmm. And what right. did the Muslims do with these coins? Did they melt them down and eliminate them and stomp on them with rage at the images and the religious images? Mm -hmm. No, they kept using them. They mm -hmm. used them and they used them and used them. Mm -hmm. And throughout the time of not only Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu mm -hmm. Alaihi Wasallam, but also in Khulafa al-Rashidin, they used these coins. Mm -hmm. And the first time that Arabic inscriptions begin to appear on the margins of the silver of the Persian silver coins, because they continued making Persian silver coins in the name of the last Persian king, Yazdegerd III, whom the Muslims had overthrown, mm -hmm. they continued making the coins just as they were, because this wasn't a thing that the Arabians did. Mm -hmm. They took that from there and they took over these countries and they just continued using the coinage they'd mm -hmm. been using. Mm -hmm. And they didn't remove the cross from the gold coins, they kept that. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is just undeniable. Mm -hmm. There is no way that anyone except a, a, a total uh, uh, bullheaded ignoramus can argue against this, this fact. It's simply true. Mm -hmm. So you can see the development of the Islamic coins from first of all, they started putting Arabic inscriptions on the margins of the Persian dirhams that they were still making. And so the Persian dirham would still have on it all of the uh, uh, decoration mm -hmm. of the, the, the Persian king, who was the, the last Persian king, and the Pahlavi inscription in the Pahlavi script of the king there. But they added at the margin of the coin, at the edge of the coin, some Arabic words. And the first words that appear are things like, Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. So you have Alhamdulillah, that appears very early, for example. But you also have other words that aren't religious inscriptions appear in Arabic, such as Tayyib mm -hmm. or Jaiz, which means that this coin is good. And that's not even a religious inscription. And so that continued in the, under the uh, Umayyad dynasty. And in the early Umayyad dynasty, already under Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan, they had started putting on these Arabic inscriptions on the edge. And they also started to insert the name of the Arab governor in Pahlavi script mm -hmm. on the coin, which was very odd because then you think, well, the Arabs aren't going to be reading the Pahlavi script, mm -hmm. but maybe the Persians were using these coins more than the Arabs and they were reading that script. So mm -hmm. it was a statement of here, this is your ruler. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. uh, the fam famous or infamous governor Ziad ibn Abi, who was called, uh, was adopted by Muawiyah or acknowledged by Muawiyah as his brother and was therefore called Ziad ibn Abi Sufyan, mm -hmm. appears on these coins as Ziad ibn Abi Sopian, mm -hmm. and so in the Pahlavi script. Mm -hmm. And so that prevailed for a time. And then as the battle heated up with the Roman Empire, 
And the uh, Roman Empire, after being defeated on sea by the uh, Muslim fleet in 655, which briefly gave control of the sea to the Muslims, came back and defeated the Muslims in a series of defeats in the 670s. So that by 678, toward the end of the reign of Muawiyah, the uh, Roman Empire was, uh, again, uh, somewhat uh, on the offensive. So pretty much you, you, it sounds like what you're saying is that either that the, the early Muslims really didn't have uh, a lot of, um, I guess you'd say, uh, a sense of apprehension about um, at least images imagery that appeared on coins yeah, no or, no or, caring about the imagery right, that appeared right. on coins mm -hmm. nor right. about the non-muslims celebrating their religious mm -hmm. ceremonies or anything like that mm -hmm. nothing of that but mm -hmm. the point that i was coming to was mm -hmm. that as a result of these de defeats by the romans mm -hmm. and then uh at a period of the truce that came out the roman emperor justinian ii decided to uh, place the replace the cross with the image of Christ on the coins. Mm -hmm. And these were shipped to the Muslim empire mm -hmm. because the Muslims used these coins mm -hmm. that were struck by the Greeks, by the mm -hmm. Roman empire, the mm -hmm. Greek speaking Romans. Mm -hmm. And they took these coins. Well, the caliphate decided at that time to reject them because they were idolatrous since they put the picture of Christ on mm -hmm. the coin. Oh, okay. And so the response was, to replace the coins and now make their own gold coins oh, with okay. the standing caliph figure. So the picture of Abdel Malik ibn Marwan is put on these earliest purely mm -hmm. Islamic right. coins mm -hmm. where he is standing holding his sword with a huge beard and wearing a rutra and agal, the Arab headdress, wow. which is attested at that time because some modern Arabs think that that is a modern invention mm -hmm. and it was not. It's an old invention. Mm -hmm. Even the agal, the headband that holds the cloth in place, that's in, pictured on the coin. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he had him, it was called the Caliph standing coin. So that it had the uh, picture of the Caliph on one side. On the other side, where there was the cross, they simply removed the bar of the cross. So now you have three steps leading up to a pole instead of leading up to a cross. Mm -hmm. This is how gradually this mm -hmm. came about. And it's very cute and very irrefutable that this is yeah. what happened. It's pretty fascinating because, like, one thing also makes me think about is 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 that that the Arabs themselves must have been more involved with the barter the barter system had it not been for the introduction of those sacred coins into the Arabian Peninsula. If they were relying largely on the coins coming from the the Roman Empire. And they were, and that, if you said that, that right. Was a, well, the a, evidence of yeah. the use of coins, mm -hmm. and this is something I haven't studied, so I can't really speak to mm -hmm. it, is based on coin hoards. So when you find coin hoards, you know people were using coins. Mm -hmm. And so the coin hoards of the time mm -hmm. seem to illustrate that there was a decline mm -hmm. in the copper coinage, which people probably used for normal purposes. So indeed, it may have become more of a barter like economy because gold coins were too valuable to be used by the common people very much. Right. But um, the, uh, in any case, though, uh, very quickly, the coins with the standing caliph on them, of this picture of Abdel Malik ibn Marwan, uh, became disliked. And you had the revolution which took place in the coinage and the idea of images where the prohibition of images came out suddenly full-blown at an exactly datable time. Mm. In fact, that can be dated uh, with total precision to the year 74 of Islam or the year 694 of the Common Era when suddenly the standing caliph coins are abolished and you have pure epigraphic coinage starting with the dinar, the gold coin, where the caliph's picture is replaced now by a coin that is entirely epigraphic. So it has Arabic inscriptions only on both sides. Okay. And that set the standard after that, that Islamic coinage down to the modern era, 
was in general like that and in general never had images of rulers on the coins. So this was like right, this actually was before um, uh, Omar ibn Abdul Aziz. And, before Omar ibn Abdul Aziz. The campaign to actually uh, amass the Hadith and the campaign to gather the Right, but he had a role right. also in this as we'll see as I go along in this historical description. I'm not quite done with that. Okay. And so in the year 78 or 698, the uh, Sasanian coins of the defunct Persian Empire with the king's picture were also changed into completely epigraphic coins. Mm -hmm. And the original inscriptions on the dirhams are more than on the dinars because the dirhams are bigger sized and so they could fit more words on them. Mm -hmm. And so the inscriptions say, uh, Allahu Ahad, Allahu Samad, Lam Yalid, Lam Yulid, Lam Yakun Lahu Kufuan Ahad. And also, Muhammadun Rasulullah Arsaluhu Bil Huda Wadin al Haqi, the Uthiruhu Al Dini Kulihi Walo Kerih al Mushrikun. And uh, on the, that was one coin. Yes, those <laughs> was on one side. And on the other side, it had. Um, La ilaha illallahu wahtahu la sharika lah. And it had Dori Bahada Dirhimu Be Mephalan Dimashk, the Senati Thaman in Sabahin. And so it had on the edge of the coin, because the inscription see that the, the Allahu Ahad Allahu Samad. And the La ilaha illallah, those were in the middle of the coins mm -hmm. in horizontal uh, rows of writing, several lines mm -hmm. of writing. And the other ones, Muhammad and Rasulullah, mm -hmm. that's on the edge of the coin, mm -hmm. around the edge, and likewise that the place where it was struck and the date. Mm -hmm. So you have these coins exactly dated, the date and the place is given, mm -hmm. which is you know very interesting material. Mm -hmm. But they all otherwise look the same. And because of that, the dirhams are very cheap to acquire. They mm -hmm. could be bought maybe for $20 a piece or something. I mean, they're, 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 they're exceedingly plentiful. And they're very old, of course, and very interesting. But they're not much interest to European collectors that cannot read Arabic.